Hi, I'm Curtis Brown, and I'm here with another Smart Space video, and I'm here with my friend Robert Adut, and we are ready to get started doing a ratios and proportions lesson for you. So, Robert, if you want to take it away, I'll let you get started. Yeah, happily. Kurt, this is good. I've been enjoying getting to know you the past few weeks, and um, I just want to point out real quick, really important, it's important I need to get this off my chest, okay? And then we'll jump in. I want to do the math with you, you know that. But like, dude, this is awesome. I love Texas Instruments. I have since I was a kid. I just need to like share that. Back in the day, like with uh, TI-82, the old school graphing calculator in, in, uh, in math class. And uh, just like in my world, whenever someone says TI, like that means calculator. I know for some people it might mean a rapper or song singer, writer, song producer or something. But TI, when I think TI, I think of calculator. A lot of people think of the rapper. And uh, it's like amazing that I reflected last night that Texas Instruments knows who I am. <laughs> it's like crazy to think about. <laughs> so that's why this is, a huge honor for, this is a great honor for me to, to collaborate with you in this way. So thanks for, thanks for doing this. And uh, let's, make some, let's make some math magic. All right. All right. Let's make some math and magic. Let's do it. Math and magic. Let's do it. Um, so one of the things that I think kids are always, and not kids and adults are uh, searching for is this application of math as it affects real life, as it affects how we live our day-to-day -day life. And you and I, we've had discussions about what's applicable and relevant, uh, not only in the lives of, let's say, teenagers that are studying this, but even the lives of uh, adults like us. And the thing that we uh, zeroed in on is this concept of how much time we spend in front of our cell phones, AKA screen time, as it's called. Yes. You know, hours of screen time. And I see your face sort of getting, uh-oh, here it comes, right? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, it it, yeah, if, we, if we're already in that territory, then we're touching on something important. You know, it's like, should we be monitoring how much time we spend in front of the screen? Should we use data and, and understanding, you know, like what we're looking at in terms of when our phones say, hey, you know, you've been using your phone for X hours, how mm -hmm. that plays out in our life. So I thought, you know, I would try to model that behavior and uh, fight back my own embarrassment. And right. uh, so we're using your, your screen time for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to use All my right. screen time. This is real data, friends. Nothing short of anything real today. Um, we're doing real data from last week's um, tally on my, on my smartphone about how much time I spent on the phone. So um, as I shake, I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, show the students what my daily average was. All right, here we All go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. And there it is. You can see uh, Robert Adude screen time. Eek! <laughs> so that's a <laughs> name image. So here we are. And we could see that um, we're looking at an average of three hours a day on the phone. Okay. 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 Heavy dose of YouTube. There you go. That's, so this is me, world, bearing my soul. This is me, it's like my uh, YouTube university, you could call it, like a lot of learning, you know, lectures and music and podcasts and some news right. and all that stuff. So let's see how this looks if we were to play out this data. All okay. right. I think so it's a good context. About, yeah, I think so too, I think so too. Um, and I think it, like it'll serve as an example for people. That's the hope that we have. All right, so let's talk about it. If you have, three hours per day, average. All right, so then we could create a bit of a graph or a chart here. And so what's interesting is how we designate what X and Y represent, okay? So often on a graph or a chart, you know, you could have two measurements. The X represents horizontal and Y is vertical like this. And it's like, well, yeah. how, how do you decide what we're measuring, okay? And so what we talked about before was primarily, usually, usually, the x-axis here represents some form of time 
as we said before, time, that time continues to march on. In this case, sure we does. say time, time, it does, no matter what we do, time measured in days, right? So we have like zero days, one day, two days, three days passing, there you go, four days and five. And then the other thing that we're measuring in this case that depends on the time, depends on the dates, would be the hours. So we could call this like phone hours. Phone hours. Hours spent languishing in front of my cell phone. That's this, phone hours here, phone hours here. And then so if we're talking about three hours every day, we could start talking about our days in very simple terms, a one, two, three, four, five days. All right, and then the first day is three hours. And then each one, as we know, we're just adding three more hours and three more hours and adding three more hours and three more hours. I think so it's important we to note here, you've got this really nice uh, relationship. You're adding three hours a day, but I did notice on your screen there, we're talking about average, right? So this is uh, right. using that and saying, hey, on average, you're spending three hours per day. I noticed your Tuesday was up pretty high compared to some of the other days, but. Right, right, that's interesting. Yeah, so actually we could come back to this word average for a second, right? Yeah. Average, average is uh, hinting at this fancy word called slope, right? So yeah, like yeah. we can, we can, we can come back to it. That's a good, that's a good point, right? We're talking about getting a broad scale view, like backing up like a bird and seeing the full picture. And so as a bird would fly, you know, the terrain changes from place to place, but overall the bird can be like, yeah, okay, I'm pretty much over Texas. I tried to wear a Texas shirt, by the way. Is this Texas-y? I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it. Like, the plaid is I'm like good. doing, I'm doing little things just out of show of respect, you know? I, I love it. I wore my Texas yeah. shirt too. More of a math <laughs> shirt, really. <laughs> well, there is nothing, you know, more Texas than Texas Instruments, so enjoy. Um, it's been great, by the way. I've, I've really enjoyed working with you up to now. This and good. this is awesome. I'm excited. So, yeah. So, um, it is it is generally an average, okay? okay. And, and what's interesting is from that average, immediately we see that after five days, let's say, right, like Monday through Friday, you know, you could have these relationships that you can make quickly, instantly, Oh, Monday through Friday, I spent 15 solid hours glued to my screen. That's okay? crazy. Taking the shame away. There's no judgment here. I'm just saying that this is what I do. I'm reporting. Okay. And so what's cool is, um, let's say, three, a lot of times students um, wonder about the construction of a ratio. So this is basically a ratio where we're right. comparing one thing to the other. One, uh, three hours to one day. And right. so if we were to construct another ratio that's equivalent, the fancy word for that is proportion, right? So proportion would be basically uh, um, translated as an equivalent ratio, another ratio. Yeah. So if I had here five, five days, and then we have 15 hours. A lot of times we don't need to overthink these. We're here. All right, Kurt, times what? It looks like you've got, um, what, five? You're multiplying by some constant of five here. Right, times five. So if you um, multiply five times five, right, times five here, times five here pretty much the way it works. If you multiply the same number top and bottom, you multiply essentially by five over five, you could get uh, equivalent ratios, AKA proportions. So then you could have like a different one. Does anyone, uh, do you have a curiosity about a certain number of days or a certain number well, of hours? You could ask I might be interested in how many days does it take you to, to reach say, um, say a full day of your life on the phone? Right. So 24 right. hours. So how long is it going to be right. before you've spent right. an entire day on your phone? That's an interesting question, right? So immediately we tune in, we listen to your question. How many days does it take? 
right? So immediately, what I would encourage anyone listening and watching this is like, when you hear things like how many days immediately, you're like, what don't I know? What don't, I don't know the date. How many days of my life would it take to reach a full day of phone time, as you said, 24 hours? And you guys, this, the people watching this also, bear in mind, this is kind of a complex scenario because Kurt pointed out something interesting the other day when we we're planning for this, is that we are, we're comparing time to time in a way. Mm -hmm. Time to time, it's kind of an interesting comparison. One type of time that just marches on forever and ever, which is the X, which is the days, day one, day two, the sun rises, the sun sets, the sun rises, the sun sets. It keeps going and going and going. Whereas this thing where we supposedly have control over, if we're not overly addicted, we supposedly have control over our phone time, our screen time there. So it is interesting to differentiate between what type of time we're talking about. Had it been a different ratio, it might be a little, might be a little more straightforward. Like in terms of, let's say, the time in terms of what day it is to the temperature, right? So right. that would be something like, oh, Monday is 70 degrees average. Tuesday, 75 degrees average, right? So it's an easier thing to see. Um, okay, good. So we're talking about 24 phone hours. Let's be clear about that. Okay, my man. What are we multiplying top and bottom? Well, in order to, I mean, I, I can kind of ask myself the question like, what times three is 24 and I, I i can find that out it'd be eight right yes um and so that means that i'm going to multiply the 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 numerator of that fraction or sorry the denominator of that fraction by uh that same value eight right because we're trying to and create an equivalent uh ratio right an equivalent fraction here an equivalent ratio right. that we talk about so 24 hours is to eight days which is right crazy to me that in just barely over a week, one, one entire 24 hour period, one lap around the sun, if you sorry, around the earth, if you will, yeah. Um, yeah. like has been spent completely on my phone. <laughs> 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 Thank you for saying on your phone so that we're in this together. <laughs> hey, listen, we're about oh, to man. use my data in a couple of videos here and I, I'll just be honest, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> that's no judgment we're, here no judgment yeah no, no judgment. judgment yeah we're gonna we're gonna say that just like, more. so many times we're just gonna like keep falling back on no judgment we do believe in no judgment but it's it just like i can't help but think of this as in real terms and I, I would encourage people if you listen to what kurt just said that that layer of synthesis you know he created a, a synthetic statement of analysis in just over a week in just over a week of time I've spent a full day, 24 solid hours, transfixed in front of my cellular device, right? And that's where the true power is, people that are watching, you guys. The power comes in being able to make conclusions and arguments based on real facts and based on real data, right? How you report it, how you package it. Um, so let's actually report it in a different way. Shall we make a little bit of a graphy poodles and then call it a day on this one? Yeah, I think this is really, this is one of my most exciting things because um, watching what's going to happen here was totally a realization for me um, the first time I saw somebody do this. So go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, it does. It does align. Wink, wink. Yes. So here we go. <laughs> we are three hours, six, six. Where am I on the stylus? There we go. Six, nine, twelve. 15 hours on the phone. And here we go. One day, three or hours, two days, six hours. In later videos, I'm looking forward to you throwing this on your screen so we could see it professionally done. This is just giving us a rough feel, right? And uh, this is what you were talking about, that we see a trend. We see a wow. trend that is entirely, the fancy word is linear, right? Linear is essentially the adjective for line. Right? Mm -hmm. It's turning line into an adjective. And so it creates a model. So it's safe to say then that ratios 
are linear. How about that? That's cool. That That's is nice really cool. Know. This was a big realization for me. I don't know about you, Robert, but you know, when I, when I think about learning about equivalent fractions, you know, in, in third grade or whatever, whenever you, you work with equivalent fractions, and I think about that that first time, and realizing that they all plot on the same point in the same spot on the number line. And then yeah. about equivalent ratios, so you have a set of equivalent ratios over there, um, you know, one to three, two to six, three to nine, right? you have this set of equivalent ratios and the fact that they all plot on a, on a line, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is a single line that they represent um, the solutions to all, all equivalent ratios um, that have this three to one sort of unit. It, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty cool to me. I didn't ever think about it in that way. Um, but this is a really nice relationship that you're showing for us. Um, yeah, I like I like the I like the fact that you're saying. that you're citing that what you're doing is you're citing the relationship in real time with real facts and real data. Like mm -hmm. it, you, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, let's invite the people to do exactly what you did. When we say things like two six, let's just be really mindful of what we mean. That it's all the same in a way. When we say two six, we're saying two days of life, six hours on phone. Right. Three days of life, nine hours on phone. And that, like you said, like you just said, that they're pretty much the same. They're measuring the same thing just played out over time. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and That's so where that up. idea of average kind of played in there. Right. And we'll get to that um, yeah. in a little while. Yeah. Uh, well, this is, uh, this is really a great start. I love the, yeah. what you've got here. Um, but I think, um, I think we can kind of take that. We've got a really nice introduction to ratios and, and proportional relationships here. I think we've got a really cool graph that we just saw there. Um, and so I think, man, Robert, thank you so much for the, for this first lesson that we've done here in this, uh, series, this space, um, this smart space series of videos. So I uh, thank you very much and we'll see you, see you next time. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.